A lot of the essential services that we use, email, data storage, and media streaming, are often in the hands of large corporations like Google and Facebook. Now, this may offer a pretty high level of convenience, but convenience is usually at the cost of privacy. These companies are taking your data and selling them to advertisers and other third parties. Today, I'm gonna to be introducing you to the idea of self-hosting and how to self-host your own TV shows, movies, and photos with the help of Jellyfin and Photoprism. Now, why would you want to self-host? Not only does it give you a lot more privacy, but it also gives you much more control over your services. In this series, I'll be showing you how to self-host many different services, including data storage, chatting, and media streaming. Once I've covered many different individual services, I'll show you how to set up your own minimal dockerized home server. I would recommend setting up a home server with an old laptop or PC just to test the waters. Right now, let's jump into Jellyfin. Many of you have likely heard of Plex. It's a nice and convenient self-hosting solution. However, many of its features are locked behind a paywall. That's where Jellyfin comes in. It allows for TV shows, movies, music, and photos. As of recording this video, everything works pretty well except for the photos part. If you want to learn more about Jellyfin, I recommend you check out their GitHub page or their website, which I'll have linked in the description. They offer many features that Plex has, like video transcoding, except with the lack of a price tag. The setup is relatively simple as well. For Docker, it's just a few simple commands before you're up and running. If you want to install it directly on your machine instead of having it containerized, there are many solutions for that too. Once you have it installed, you can simply go to port 8096 of your server IP in your web browser. If you're using a different port than 8096 and you've configured it to do so, make sure you're typing in that port. Also, if your connection times out, make sure the firewall isn't blocking anything. Once you've accessed your Jellyfin server, all you have to do is follow the setup wizard and everything will be configured and ready to go. In a future video, I'll be going over how to set up a reverse proxy to get rid of the port 8096 at the end and to configure a different domain to use, so stay tuned for that. Now it's time for Photoprism. Photoprism is an open source Google Photos replacement that is over 10,000 stars on GitHub. It has a neat UI and it uses Google TensorFlow to categorize your images. It currently only works in the web browser, but you can add it to the home screen on your mobile device for it to function like an app. It also has a community developed beta app to test. Installation for Photoprism is pretty simple with Docker. All you have to do is install the docker-compose.yml file with wget. Once you've downloaded it, make a few changes to the file to set up your photos location, and finally run docker-compose up-d to run it in the background. Once done, it'll be available at port 2432 for you to access in your browser. Once you start adding more files and need them to be indexed, all you have to do is run the command docker-compose exec photoprism Photoprism index. That'll take a few minutes to complete and a little longer on your first time. To get photos on the server from your phone, you'll likely have to set up a Samba server and use an app like Photosync to sync directly to it. All in all, this is an awesome piece of software that I now use to exclusively store my photos. I think self-hosting is great and I think everyone should at least give it a try because it takes a little effort to greatly increase your privacy and give you a little more control. Stay tuned for my next video, where I'll cover some more self-hosted software. Until then, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you have any suggestions or questions. Thanks for watching.